Hi everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Danny James. I make video editing tutorials that incorporate different styles used in music videos, inclusive of effects, transitioning, and all that. In this video, I'll be showing you this method that replaces part of an object, let's say it's a photo frame, and you can replace that, put something else in it, let's say it's a video, text, image, whatever you want. How I got this idea, it's from this video by Okello and Bensol, and you can see this effect being used in the very first seconds of this video. Yeah, as you can see, it's just a normal picture frame which has been replaced and then it goes back to a normal picture frame and it shifts like that. So let's use part of this video so that you can understand more clearly. And now this part of the video is very short whereby we get this frame. So I'll make it longer by adjusting the speed and duration. I'll put it to 80. And then always to be safe in this situation, I'll duplicate this layer. And now what you want to do to, the, to this layer is to replace it with After Effects. And now you can right click on it and go to After Effects. All right, now on After Effects, we have the same clip. But now my advice, the way that I did it, it can give you a lot of problems in the near future. So let's undo this and let's duplicate that. Now my advice is to actually cut the part of the frame which you want to adjust on Adobe After Effects instead of going with the entire clip. Right where this shot ends, I'm using my arrow keys. Click on this video, hit Ctrl K to make a cut. Alternatively, you can grab the razor tool and cut it manually. And then I'll go to the very end of this shot. I'll use my arrow keys once again and I'll hit Ctrl K. Now I want to replace only this part with Adobe After Effects, so I'll right click on it and replace. That way we don't have to work with any other parts of this clip or this other one. Yeah, and now we are on Adobe After Effects and right now it should be very easy for us to work. First thing you want to do, you want to duplicate this clip, hit Ctrl D on your keyboard and Command D on Mac. And then you can hide the visibility of that video. And now on this first frame, you want to grab the pen tool and you want to create a mask around this frame. If you want and if you have time, you can also create a mask on different frames if you have multiple on your video, but that might take longer. So I'll go to each corner. and then I'll join the mask. Now having connected all the points, we can go to our mask settings, just click on your clip and hit M. And then if you click on invert, you can see what it tells you. But right now we want to track this mask and the best way it's by going to this mask path and enabling that icon. You can disable that inversion and you can change the masking mode to none. For this, we are doing this so that you can see all points of this picture as we keep on keyframing. I'll suggest using full resolution and then using page down and page up, you can go left or right along the timeline. So and right now at this point, I'll go ahead five frames and then I'll adjust this mask. And as, as you can see, I'm having this trouble. I'm selecting all the points at once. Now how you can go around that, make sure to not be on your pen tool and instead on your selection tool. That way you can highlight on this anchor point and then you can adjust it accordingly. And after the first one, the others should be also individual points to adjust. Now we are done making that mask. As you can see, we've been tracking these points through the entire frame. It's time to go to your mask options and you can put it on subtract. The other option is putting it on add and then 
inverting that selection. So whichever you choose, just don't mix yourself up. And now with our points like this and everything tracked, it's now time we can add anything beneath this clip. So I'll drag this part of the same video right here. And as you can see, if we play it through, yeah, as you can see, the video plays very smoothly, but let's scale it just a bit so that you can avoid those black edges. It plays very smoothly. And if you go back to our Adobe Premiere, everything plays out just as fine. Yeah, that's basically it. Now we can do a few things to make our effect even better. We can add even text layers. So I'll delete that layer that we just put beneath and then you can go and create a new composition. So on this new composition, you can add some simple text like the name of the artists, put it right here. And then here on your character adjustments, you can adjust the cunning and the tracking, all of that, and also the size of the text like that. And let's rename this composition so that you can see it, artist name. Now, if we jump back to our composition now, you can drag this artist name composition right beneath that. And then you can change the scaling once again. As you can see, uh, that's basically it. And then we can keep on adding a few things to this layer. Let's add some background. I'll drag this simple backdrop and place it right beneath this text. As you can see, we are working on a different composition, which makes it really easy to work with these layers. Just like that. And then we don't need anything done on this one. We can even lock it so that we don't select it as we adjust the text. And then with the text, you can really do many things with text layers. And let me show you something simple. Go to your text and then you can add this animate button and you can play around with something like tracking. And then play around with these figures and see what they do. This one makes the text either be more tracked or less. As you can see, there's more space in between the text or not. There are more options still. I can add character offset. So I love this one more than other effects. It makes your text be random until it's actual text. So let's add a keyframe right here and then drag this keyframe up to about four seconds. And then right in the beginning, we can have it as much as 200. And now if we preview it, it looks like some mix, which becomes clear and then you can always adjust between these two keyframes and put easy ease if you need to go further you can adjust the graph editor settings so that it comes from uh, somehow low speed to very high speed so let's look at it yeah like that and then the final thing that i will add to this is a rotation keyframe i'll go you can see at this point i've left it at zero which is where it is and then at this point, I'll have it rotate through, let's say, six times. Yeah, that is something really easy to do. And then one thing I forgot when adjusting these properties for rotation is that the, it needs to rotate from a central point. As you can see, the anchor point is right here. So it's rotating relative to this point right here, this one. And an easy fix. Just make sure to click on your layer, go to layer, go to transform and center anchor point in layer content. And now if we rotate it, as you can see, now it rotates very evenly. And if you go back to our linked composition, just change the scaling of this so that it occupies the space. Uh, let me adjust these keyframes so that they don't stay for long, about one second. So you can just press U while on this layer so that you can get all the keyframes that you've made. And then I'll drag all of them right here. And then if you go back, it should be really smooth and easy to follow. So that's just small things that I was trying to show you. Let me disable these effects. so that we have just a uniform text layer. 
And then now the next thing you want to do, you want to work on how it zooms away from this photo. So it needs to follow along with the video so that it makes sense as if it was right there. And how you want to do that, let's go back to this layer which we disabled. So let's disable everything else and re-enable the background layer which we put right here in case we ever needed it. And what you want to do, you want to track this video. And how you want to do, you want to track the motion. Just click right here and it will automatically take me to a layer. Now I want to track both the positioning and scale. This will give me two track points and with two track points all you need to do is place them somewhere which there is a contrast, an obvious contrast. Like right there, I might also go on this other side like right there. You can use any other point, but for now, I want to use this one. Let's analyze it going forward. And as you can see, it's actually doing a pretty nice job following through. And we've gotten all the track points. Since this video is short, it doesn't have many. Since this video is short, it doesn't take so long to track these. And then what you want to do, we want to apply these effects, but we need to place them somewhere else. So I'll right click right here and I'll create a new null object. We'll just use it to put this tracking information on the null object. Click back on this layer, edit the target and put the target to go to a null object and apply. It will ask you to apply both dimensions and accept both of them. Now as you can see there are hundreds of track points now on this null object. And now we no longer need the layer right beneath so we can disable it. And all you want to do, let's go back to our composition and re-enable every other layer that we are working with. The simple thing we want to do, we want to parent this composition which is this video right here you want to parent it to the null object now it will follow the track points so that's the last bit which makes your effect look somehow real we can replace these texts and put something else so let's disable all, all these layers and bring something else yeah so i'll place this part of this video right here on this composition i'll disable the other text layers and i also want to change these composition settings so it's right here, let, let me disable everything else. And then let me also change the composition settings so that you can fit this video well. Go to composition, composition settings, and you can also put it as a 1920 by 1080. And then let's scale it so that it fits the entire frame like that. And then let's go back to our linked composition and you will be able to see the same thing reflect. Let's just change the scaling so that it occupies and also rotate it just quite a bit. So that's that's basically it. And if you need this to switch between the actual video or the actual picture frame to the normal and then switching back, it's very easy to do that with this. Let's just save here. Yeah, if we go back to Adobe, we have the linked composition right this way. And now this is the reason why I insisted us to make a duplication. Right, let's say at this point, you can make a cut, control K, and then go five frames, one, two, three, four, five, hit control K again on this clip. You can delete that portion. So as I, as I said earlier on, this is a very short portion of the clip to use to illustrate, but I know you get the point from this. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching the video. If you enjoy such content, kindly give it a thumbs up. It encourages other people with the same interest as you to watch the same video. And if you have any suggestions, questions or any queries, kindly leave them on the comment box right below. My name is Danny James. Hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.